Hello. Uh, hey guys. Uh, thanks for thanks for welcoming and thanks for coming in. Uh, my name is Himanshu Mishra, and I'm an undergrad at IIT Kharagpur. And today I'm going to talk about Stingray. It's a new library that we are building for spectral timing of astronomical extra data. And I am that on GitHub on Twitter. So, okay. Uh, Okay, so uh, I study maths and computing back uh, at college, and uh, so if someone would ask me how do we study black holes, I would say, okay, uh, we can take images and see it's, a bla it's black and it looks like a hole, so it should be a black hole, but then some, someone uh, among you will come to me and say, no, it's not the way to do it. So there's something called X-ray astronomy, so we, we uh, observe and detect X-rays from astronomical objects, and then there are pretty exciting ways to do that. Uh, so the X-rays are absorbed in the Earth's atmosphere, and uh, we release balloons and everything so to detect those X-rays from those objects. So uh, uh, please show of hands if you have worked with X-ray binaries ever. X-ray binaries? Yeah, yeah, so uh, X-ray binaries are uh, class of binary stars, so uh, which which are luminous in X-rays. So X-ray binary has a very small community, like like here. So uh, there are powerful X-rays emitted from the matter falling from the donor to the accretor, and uh, the other one is pretty compact, maybe a black hole or a neutron star. So we collect. So how do we study X-ray binaries? So uh, it's actually quite hard. The main problem by, of, of, uh, about studying X-ray binaries is that we can't spatially resolve them. So we can't take a picture and we can't separate, okay, there's the uh, event horizon, there's, there's this other thing. We can't do that. So the only way we can do is uh, by may anal analyzing their X-ray data. So the first thing, do, there are, Dominantly, two ways to do that. So the first thing is X spectroscopy. So we have the we have the energy spectra, and we can try to fit any new models to do that. And the other one is timing. So yeah, the other one is timing. So we have the photon arrival times, and uh, we can try we can we can try to do Fourier analysis over it and uh, learn about it. So it's, spectroscopy is about uh, knowing what what components are in the in the X-ray, and timing is about the systems. Are, the binary systems are very dynamic, and they vary on the scales of subseconds. So, timing is about that. But the, we can we can mix spectroscopy and timing. Something called spectral timing that we are going to do. So, spectral timing is uh, is about what components from a spectroscopy vary how. It's timing. So yeah, that's about spectral timing. And there's some, some ways to do that uh, in polarimetry, but, but which is not around, which might be here in two or three, two, three years. That's, that's what I'm aware of. So yeah, uh, so, we have an, so we have an event list. We have photon arrival times from the X-rays. And uh, we, we, we count our photons. So we create a long list of photons, and then we create a light curve. That's, that's the fundamental class on variability analysis. So we have this light curve. And uh, among all of the analyses that we do, most of them are fair analysis. And why do we want to do that? Uh, I'll explain here. So you can see there are two light curves uh, from two different sources. They look pretty alike, but when we go into the frequency domain by doing Fourier analysis, they follow different trends, and that's that's why we want we don't want to play in the time domain, and we do a lot of Fourier analysis and play a lot with the power spectra and other things. So, and uh, by the way, this is not just uh, the power spectrum of the uh, segment that's shown above. So it's it's averaged over the complete segment, and it's just to show the above. Images are just to show that they vary on a very, very minute, le minute second level. So yeah, so Stingray, so how about it? So we have our base classes, we have light curves, and then methods to do input-output for the events data. We have power spectra, cross spectra, lags, uh, pretty much a lot of things, some simulators. And it was not there uh, a year ago, so I'll tell you uh, how it got there. Pulsar tools and, uh, and a minute GUI. So, 
And we document our methods in this notebook, which I would like to show you. Uh, I think, yeah. Yeah, so this is our repository for the notebooks. We, we try to put everything at a beginner level. So yeah, it's, it's about playing with light curve. Then we can do power spectra, cross spectra, and uh, here you go. So the, my favorite part about this library is how much, how much we play with the magic methods of Python and how much, so the simple API of the library. So you can see this is a light curve. And uh, light, curve is com light, uh, light curve is composed of two things primarily. So the first thing is the time, time bins. So it's like at first second, we had five photons. So at second second, we had 10 photons. So then we'll get a light curve. So yeah, you can see an example. So we create a random time array, then counts array. Then we can create light curve like this, times and counts. And there are, there are many, so it's a, it's a second way of creating light curve. So there are many uh, magic methods that we have involved. So yeah, that's about it. You can do, you can add to light curves, you can subtract to light curves, you can do negation, you can get the counter at a particular time. And uh, yeah, you can concatenate, truncate, and then you can rebin your light curve. So if, if, if you don't want to play at uh, seconds level, you can just ribbon to a larger, so you can do it like, I want in 10 seconds per, per bin. So you can, you can ribbon for a larger time interval and sorting, plotting, everything. <laughs> So this is about light curve, and you can see uh, we have notebooks for everything, power spectra, I don't want to go in detail. Uh, yeah, cross spectra, lots of simulators. Okay, uh, cool. So uh, these are some of the things that we want, uh, which is currently going on as a Google Summer of Code project, uh, or, and some things which we want to be done in future. So yeah, we we don't have so there are we already have lots of archive data, uh, and we want a lot of scripts to just convert them and uh, fit in our in our library. So they, they, it will require a lot of scripts. And then, yeah, these are some methods that we want. And finally, uh, we want to become uh, an AstroPy affiliate package. So, uh, and we are on the right track because one of the project ma uh, maintainers, Matteo Bacchetti, uh, has a library which is already uh, accepted in uh, AstroPy affiliate package. And we have already talked to the mentors and we are in the right direction uh, to becoming ex ex accepted. So why do you wanna make something like this? Uh, so as I said, uh, X-ray uh, astronomy has a very small subgroup, and mostly they are. Uh, so if you wanna, if you wanna do a bachelor's, if you wanna do a master's in uh, that field, or even a short-term project, you'll get a code from your previous researchers, and that will be undocumented, untested for sure. And then you'll have to go, and you'll have to spin the wheel again, invent the wheel again, and do it on your own. So there is no one single comprehensive library which does this, and uh, that, that's, that's the motivation of doing it. And uh, there are a lot of techniques that we have written, which is pretty common in other analysis as well. So many analysis methods used in finance, music analysis, healthcare, have pretty much in pretty much the same thing, and as you see, a lot of methods, covariance, spectra, cross spectra, they're just uh, tweaks on their own. So it's 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 nothing like you ha you have to write there again. You have to write one 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 again and again. So you, you have one, then you can just tweak around and then create new methods. So yeah, there's a, there's a lot of time being wasted uh, by the in the research community of uh, yeah extra binaries. And we, we want to make an, a good interface, a GUI for playing with, the, playing with the data we have and then do a lot of simulations as well. So uh, we, have, we, have, we, we, feel, uh, we feel good about having a, a good community support. So ESA, the European Space Agency, uh, has, has, has given us funding to create a graphical interface. And the two guys which uh, got the funding, they, they, they made the 
coordinators of the Stringer Library, and they said, we want to base our, our research on this. So yeah, that, that was indirectly how we got into the funding, and then Google, and then we were accepted in the Google Co Summer of Code program last year. So that's how I got into this library, because uh, I'm not an astronomer myself. I'm an undergrad. and. Uh, I, I was searching around. I was, it was a, it was a very baby library back then, and I thought, yeah, it sh it should be it should be fun uh, <laughs> creating a new library on our own. So I worked on it for three months. Uh, I worked on so I'll I'll be telling about Goldsmith code now. So yeah, that's it. That's there's me. I worked on the methods of the library, and there was Usman who was doing the simulators. There was Danish who was working on the GUI. And now uh, we are under Python Software Foundation for this year. So Harun, Harun is continu continuing the work about the time series. And Omar is doing a lot of benchmarks, a lot of uh, what do you call, uh, detecting bottlenecks in the library. And he's trying to improve that. So yeah, how many of you have heard of Astro Week, uh, Astro Hack Week? OK. okay. So uh, this project was born in Astro, Week, Astro Hack Week two years ago. So Daniela and Abigail had their uh, research research product pro project and the extra binaries, and uh, they they wished, hey, uh, there's no one comprehend coherent library to about extra binaries, so why don't we make it? Then then they met Mathieu, uh, who had who had a lot of similar code around, uh, Pulsar tools and all. And Paul and Simon uh, are the guys from ESA who had, who had to make the GUI and really liked uh, the Stingray library. So yeah, there's, there's a GitHub project, GitHub organization, and there's a homepage. And uh, yep, uh, we, we really hang, hang out on Slack uh, a lot. So if you, if, you, if you have any questions that you want to ask to us or uh, if you if you are interested, if you want to contribute anything, just please uh, join us. Like that's the same link here, tinyurlcom slash join stringray. So we we'd love to love you uh, there. And uh, I think I think uh, that's all. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I would love to take questions. Um, any questions? Yeah, I was, I was curious about, um, you said there's these multiple components and you were working on, on just one of them. Are you, are you working like closely hand in hand with the rest of that, that team? Uh, yeah, so uh, my personal mentor is Daniela and uh, they, have, they have listed a lot of methods around. And I was, I was curious about the time series part, so I'm... I'm basically doing a lot of Python and just reading on the algorithms and converting in them. That's my part, but those guys are doing a wonderful job. They are looking for looking around everything. They have been contacting people in the same similar field, and yeah, that, that's it. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so the data that we get primarily, uh, as much as I'm aware of, it's 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 uh, the photon arrival times. So I will put a detector in the atmosphere, and then it will have. So every second, it will count how many photons, how many X-rays it got, and they and we have. So the people who collect the data, not not me, uh, they have they have decided a particular energy range. So they're like, okay, this energy range corresponds to this galaxy or this binary system, and then they'll keep keep observing it. So in one second, if it got six photons, if they got ten photons, if they got zero photons, that is the light curve. That's the fundamental part. That's a, that's the how they got there. That they how they have the data. Yeah. E, uh, yes, yes, similar, yeah, similarly. Question? Yeah. Uh, how about uh, Pulsar? So they, they're very prominent in, in uh, x-rays. Yeah. Uh, so exactly, uh, 
as I said, sir, uh, I'm not an astronomer myself. So pulsar tools were actually written by Matteo Bacchetti, and then he included the, it in this string library. So if you, if you have any that specific questions, uh, please, please join our Slack and then ask it there. Since we have an extra minute, I'm going to use my chair's privilege and say, yeah. you mentioned Astro Hack Week. If you're interested in that model, it's, uh, we're running the Astro Hack Week, the Neuro Hack Week, and the Geo Hack Week this September at UW. And if you're interested in that model, it's, it's a super cool way to get people together who are like working on computational tools in a specific field and learning from each other and collaborating, and, and it's very fun. So if you're curious about that, you can ask me. Sorry to piggyback. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, let's thank you. Thank you.